what does it take to be a YouTuber in 2020? Mm. What does it take? <laughs> I love this silent. For, mm. For, mm. Well, I think the first step is just to start. Yeah. Like, I feel like so many people just talk about it, but then they don't start because of fear or yeah. insecurities or... I think, I think one of the biggest hurdles to get over is that you have such a high expectation of yourself in the beginning that you take so long just to put the first video. Hello everybody, how's it going? I'm your host, Joey Palmrus, and welcome to my podcast, The Joey Palmrus Show. If you are into photography, filmmaking, storytelling, social media, we cover all of that and everything in between. This is where I sit down with the world's top creatives to discuss about their artistic journeys. We unpack valuable insights in all things creative to help you live your dreams. And without further ado, let's start this episode. How's it going, y'all? And welcome to the new episode. Today, we'll be joined with a wedding photographer, filmmaker, who's also chosen the life of being a full-time YouTuber. Folks, I give you the one and only one-man band, Teppo Hapoya. <laughs> Teppo! <laughs> Dude, you should become a hockey commentator. Yeah, I've thought about it. Dude, it welcome to the show, idea. man. Great to have you. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, you're my favorite Canadian. Am I the only Canadian? After, <laughs> a, after the beeps, though. You, you, okay, okay, yeah. okay. It's pretty high up. <laughs> pretty high up. Dude, really, thanks for making the time. I know you're a super busy guy, and um, you're always filming, since that content isn't going to film itself, right? So <laughs> it's funny, though, every single time when I do give you a call, though, you never pick up. You just always reply with a message saying like, dude, I'm filming, like, stop bothering me. And you're the first one, like, you ask me something and I just figure it's easier to give you a call back. But you're always just, dude, you're always filming, man. How long have you done YouTube? Uh, so I started the YouTube channel back in October, 2017. Okay. But I was, that was when I was living in Australia. So I didn't really have too much time back then to make the video. So it was more of just like, one video here and there just okay. for fun but to you're document Canadian. our what life did you do in Australia? Australia. What did you do in Australia? You're Canadian. Is it uh, too warm for my, you there? My wife and I were studying in Australia for two years. So we went there. We got married in 2015 and then we just bounced out of Finland right away and went to Australia for two years and oh, started that's, life that's together. Cool, man. That's cool. You miss Australia now after, because you live in Finland now, right? Yeah, we're living in Finland now. Yeah, of course, I live in Australia. I think we if, if we didn't have so much family and friends here in Finland or in Canada, we probably would have stayed in Australia. Gotcha. It's a great country. Gotcha. Dude, tell me, is it easy to do YouTube? Um, what's your process, man? <laughs> like, you, Do you plan a like, bunch of videos ahead, or how does that work for you? Because of course, of course, YouTube is easy. It's just, all you do is just hang out and go on an epic adventure trips and just have a good time. <laughs> Oh, that's I'm just okay. Kidding. okay. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube is a lot of work. I mean, I always think it's funny when people, uh, if I tell them that I do YouTube now for a living, they always yeah. assume that that you just travel a lot and just hang out and have fun. Yeah. And there is those moments where you're having a lot of fun and hang out. But I would say that YouTube, if you want to like make it in the YouTube world and create good content, you're working hard. Right. So uh, I always have like a, a list in my phone of ideas and always think of new ideas, and then every week. Putting so out it's two non-stop, videos, three right? videos a week. It's not yeah, it's not stop. Yeah, definitely. It, it does help now that in the beginning I'd always be making the the video for the week, the week of. So that was always like really stressful. Where it'd be like Tuesday, and you're like, dang, I gotta film and edit it for Wednesday kind of thing. But nowadays yeah. I always make the videos for a week in advance, so that kind of gives me a week window to get the videos done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but dude, you're. I mean, you can call yourself a full time YouTuber, right? But was it was it easy to start? Was it easy to have that sort of, not change because you still do weddings. You're also a wedding uh, photographer yeah. and filmmaker. But was it easy to get started with YouTube though? How was that for you, man? Um, I think the hard part is that it's like in the beginning, you're not making a lot of money from YouTube. And of course I don't do the YouTube stuff just for money, but you still gotta make yeah. money somehow. Right. So then you're, you're shooting weddings and you're editing weddings and then you're trying to figure out in your spare time, how can you still make YouTube videos? But for myself, it's really helped that last year I started uh, outsourcing, started outsourcing my okay. wedding film editing. So I have an editor in Canada who I send the footage to and he edits it for me. Oh, sweet. And then, 
in the last few months, I've actually had an editor here in Finland as well for the YouTube channel. Oh, that's so it's cool, really fr- freed me up a lot, like because editing a wedding film together or even editing a YouTube video, especially like the talking parts, it's not the most intense editing. So yeah, it's really helped yeah. having someone else to do that. And then I've been able to spend more of my time just kind of with ideas, filming and really just like developing the whole channel and products that we have and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's been, a, it was a big step for me though, even with the, the wedding company. Cause I was like, I was always like, no, I want it to look exactly like my style. Yeah. But then I eventually I was able to teach other people to do the exact same style. So then it was like, okay. Yeah. That's good. The, I like, I, I could only like imagine that being the hardest part. Like I'm a freelancer, as you know, myself. And yeah. Like even thinking about like giving my work for someone else to edit and because you, I mean, everybody has their specific styles and that's why you get hired, right? So outsourcing is like, I mean, it sounds awesome and awesome that you found the way to do it. But like for me, like that'd be freaking scary (laughs) though. Oh yeah. It it, it takes like trial and error and a lot of communicating what you want and then just like, back and forth like in the beginning of course i had to give a lot more feedback and then later on nowadays my first my wedding editor he's really good so he knows what i want and he can do the style and it's kind of fun because i send him this footage yeah and i have no clue how it's going to turn out yeah and then he sends me this final product i'm like oh that's really cool okay like a lot of times he's actually been able to do more interesting or creative cuts than i would have even done just because he's newer and maybe he's more you know, fresh and excited about editing it. Whereas for example, yeah. myself, I've been a wedding photographer video for 10 years now. So maybe sometimes it, I've even gotten it easy, right. And, was it easy to make the change? Like to start, I mean, if you got to choose now, I mean, I bet yeah. you do love shooting weddings because that what you still do, right? So, yeah. but if you got to choose the life of just <laughs> doing your own material just for yourself, would you like choose that one? over weddings. like what like weddings over youtube yeah or other way around vice versa yeah i mean like i've been transitioning over the years so like two years ago i did 30 weddings last year I did 20 weddings and this year i'll probably do like 10 to 15 weddings so i'm kind of easing my way out of it yeah but then at the same time i do like weddings i think it's fun like i'm a really extroverted guy like you so yeah. it's fun just to go to a big party hang out with a bunch of people yeah, weddings through the, the weddings yeah, it's like it's the best day of people's lives, so it's not like a bad day to be a part of. And then and through the wedding, a lot of traveling honest, opens up. Yeah, but to be honest, it's different than shooting a commercial as well because when you do weddings, it's sort of like you're doing a video for yourself as well, right? Yeah, because you sure. get to create yeah. that Disney short film, whatever, with the yeah. love story and all that. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Mm, yeah, um, you don't have to have, like if you do a commercial video, you make a video, but then they give you all this input and they change yeah. and you're like, this is not what I wanted to and do. You always go, no, that's wrong. I know the best. Why, why do you want me to make those changes? You're wrong. Come on. But a client is always right. So, <laughs> uh, dude, let's talk about the grind, man. The grind of YouTube. Dude, do you feel like you still, you're still on the grind, like from the day you started? Like you're still on that grind journey grind horse <laughs> you feel like you still need to like what i mean is um do you feel like like um like you need to post not necessarily every single day like you do you know maybe on instagram and stuff but like on weekly basis and if you don't follow through like then you go mm. oh i'm a i'm a bad person i'm a bad i'm a bad filmmaker <laughs> like i'm not i'm not doing this right <laughs> Yeah, I, I think definitely with YouTube, it's like you feel this pressure. Like in the beginning, I had a goal that I'd just make one video a week because yeah. I, I understood that at the time when I started my channel, I was in school running in the wedding business and starting YouTube. So I made a really realistic goal, like just one video a week. But then in those weeks, if I just couldn't do it, I felt really bad. But then yeah. I, I went through this process where I realized that like no one's getting upset at me or like no one's like commenting or yelling at me like where's the video you know yeah. like of course people are probably waiting for a new video to come out <laughs> but, but you still really have that though so. yeah you do get it sometimes but i, I guess and i it's just realized you that shouting to you as well it's not a boss it's yeah, not a true. client so it's even worse yeah true <laughs> yeah i guess that's that's why i had to realize myself that like the pressure that i'm feeling is just from myself and yeah and i had to like give myself some grace and be like hey it's okay if one week you don't make a video kind of thing but of course if you want to grow the channel you want to be consistent it's like yeah. 
if you have your TV show every Wednesday, 8 p.m. back in the day, you'd be so upset if that show didn't come out that week. So that's how I see it for my like YouTube channel that, of course, I want to put out the content that they would enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about, um, uh, talking about that, um, how did you pick your niche? Was that like a journey of itself as well? Mm. Yeah, because definitely. I think it, it changes over time. Because yeah. I remember when I started my YouTube channel, I was living in Australia. So mm-hmm. I thought, okay, th- if, if, if ever I'm going to start a YouTube channel, this would be an interesting time to start just to show our life in Australia. So it was kind of yeah, yeah. like travel films from Australia or we were at that time traveling to Bali or different areas like that were interesting from that side of the world. I went to mm-hmm. New Zealand. So I made a lot more travel films and just vlogs from Australia. But then when I came back to Finland, of course, we weren't traveling as much anymore. Yeah. So that changed. So then it became more about photography, filmmaking tutorials and talking about gear and just like teaching. And then now, even in this year, I've realized that a lot of like creatives, they're really good at their craft, but they're mm. really bad at running a business. Yeah. So I've even started run, like adding a lot of business like videos into my channel just to teach creatives that like, yeah, so, hey, you don't have to be a poor you don't have to be a poor creative. So I think it's changing all the time. Like I, I think you've kind of like, you have a niche, but at the same time you can kind of like move around and try different things. Of course, if all of a sudden I make like, well, for example, just for fun, I've been doing some Finnish related videos just because I do live in Finland and people in North America who are my audience are interested. Yeah. But it's kind of funny. Like my, my most watched video right now is this video about my house. Yeah. And it has like 280,000 views. What and the one like, that's where you're cool. living right that's... now? Pardon? The one that you're living right now in Finland? Yeah, the house, yeah, the, the house I had. So I did this Finnish homes, unique feature about Finnish homes. And the video right. has, I think, 280,000 views, which is my most watched <laughs> video, which is so bad because that's not even my niche. Dude. But then I, I realized because my friend was talking about it with me that like, it's even though I've got thing. a lot of... Yeah, it's the, the sound sound thing, for sure. Because, dude, my most watched video is also <laughs> like I went to, yeah, <laughs> it's it's Love literally the thumbnail. Thumbnail says Finland sauna, and then I'm walking naked <laughs> on a deck. That's it. <laughs> hey, well, who's gonna click that if they're watching that? Oh yeah, yeah. But, but for me, like having having these finished videos, they don't really like help grow my channel because the people watching those videos they're usually not photographer or filmmakers they're just random people. Yeah. So yeah, I get a lot of views in that one video, but it's not really actually like growing the actual audience that I would want to have. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting trying those different kind of videos from different niches being like, okay, yeah, these get views, but they don't really help build your yeah. photography filmmaking channel that you want to have. Yeah. I mean, like, I think, I mean, main thing is just to do like what, you want to see like what you enjoy doing right like because okay. that's why you start doing youtube or anyone starts doing youtube hopefully i mean there are obviously people who are like after after the money and cloud as well but <laughs> you know just do the stuff that you're good at you know the mm, stuff you yeah. enjoy doing right like um especially like you know if you're starting out with a channel don't try to just copy a person who's good in i don't know skydiving if you don't skydive don't <laughs> Don't go yeah. do it, right? Like, find your own sense. thing. Yeah. What made you pursue this to be a full-time YouTuber? Because uh-huh. I think I think it's super cool. I think it's super awesome what you're doing. I mean, I, I got like a massive commercial background myself when it comes to photography and filmmaking, and I'm still doing that. I'm, I'm just dappling with YouTube. And yeah. um, um, because it's so funny, like how only like a few years back, if you said like you're a YouTuber, people didn't mm. consider you as a serious filmmaker. Yeah, and true. now only like, <laughs> this, and that was, dude, that was like only a few years back. And now mm. there's so much amazing content and amazing creators on this platform where yeah. that content content is even sometimes better what you have in the traditional media. Yeah, true. Yeah, for me, it was like when I was living in Australia, my brother, Matty, he, yeah. he also has a YouTube channel. And he kept saying to me, like, start a YouTube channel. I was like, nah, like, I don't want to do that. But I think a part well, of me did want to do it. Yeah, my brother, yeah, my brother would always tell me, like, you start a YouTube channel. And I was like, nah, I don't want to. But I think for <laughs> me, the hardest part was just to be comfortable being in front of the camera. Because, yeah. like, up to that point, I'd always been filming other people. Yeah, and yeah. then all of a sudden with a YouTube channel, you'd have to be in front of the camera and you're kind of like the main focus. Yeah. But I think the, the main main motivation for me to start was just to like help up and coming photographers and filmmakers. Because I know when I started, there really wasn't that many like tutorials or YouTube channels yet. 
Yeah. And I think it's like, I think it's cool that you can help like these up and coming young guns who are going to be like way better than I am yeah. and give some wisdom and knowledge, but at the same time, they're probably better than I am but already. Dude, so. I think like even now, like during the situation where we're living the whole Corona thing, like mm. the world has stopped, but I feel like it hasn't really affected YouTube. And yeah. like, if you think about like people who do traditional media, for example, talk show host or whatever in yeah. Hollywood, They've started to do YouTube. I mean, they've done it before, just like reposting their episodes, what they air. Um, yeah. But now, like, you've seen, I mean, there's Jimmy Kimmel freaking shooting himself, filming himself at <laughs> his own house. And yeah. the funny part is, I mean, these are sort of people who are not, I mean, they don't necessarily, like, know the entire craft, like, how to shoot with a camera, with, you know, with what settings, what sort of lighting, you know, should one have and whatnot. And they're still doing it. And I think it's pretty cool, like how, you know, the traditional media and what we have on the internet, YouTube, like all these awesome platforms that where you can post videos and photos. Yeah. So like, there's not a line between traditional media and, you know, social media mm. anymore. It's kind of like intervened, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, yeah. I don't think for, for me, like, because I did have a background in shooting weddings and then doing commercial work for companies. Mm. Like, I guess with my brother, we always talked about with it. The cool thing about YouTube is that if you can create a brand or a YouTube channel that in a way you get enough <clears throat> passive income just from making the videos, then you don't yeah. have to be dependent on other brands to like, in a way that you don't have to like spend half your time going out there just to get the work. Yeah. You just make videos and then it makes you money and then you just focus on making cool videos for yourself yeah. that you get paid for. So I think that's always been for myself even like that the fact that I can live in here in Finland in a small town making cool videos that people watch all around the world that I can yeah. impact people worldwide. Yeah, because you don't need to be in Hollywood anymore to do this. Like, no, if you want to be in no. the industry, you don't need to be there. You can do no, it like not. from wherever you want, <laughs> from Australia or Finland. So yeah. I think that's pretty cool, man. Um, yeah. Dude, um, what's your background? And I don't mean you being Canadian. I mean like the journey yeah. with photo and film. Yeah. Like, how, how did you get started? Um, how did I get even started? Well, obviously growing up like with my brothers, we were really into like rollerblading and snowboarding. Yeah. So back then it was kind of like, you know, we had a video camera just to film to make you know, videos, but no one really was interested in the filming. It was more like you just had to film. So we'd always take turns, like who's going to be filming today. And then you'd film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so I didn't really get too into it, but I did dabble back then with like editing. So I'd learned how to use premiere or final cut already back then. And that was like, I was 15 at the time and I'm 30 now. So 15 right. years ago, I already started playing with editing programs, but then it was like in 2000, 2009, I think 2009, yeah. I, uh, I saw like the footage from Canon T2i, the, I think it's the 550D in Europe. It was like, yeah. they had, they, the, a lot of people were filming already with the 5D Mark II. Yeah. And then, but that was too expensive for me because I was like, I wasn't too into photography yet. But then when the Canon T2i came out, I was like, okay, this is an affordable DSLR that films really good, yeah, yeah, like yeah. high quality video. So then that's when I brought, I bought my camera and then later my brother bought the 60D. Yeah. And then when we started buying camera gear, we were like, oh, shoot, like we're spending a lot of money on gear. We got to make money. So what are we going to do? <laughs> well, let's shoot weddings because, well, everyone's getting married. Like a lot of our friends at the time. Oh, started so getting that's married. how you started and, and, weddings. Yeah, they, the our friend, yeah, our friends were just asking us like, oh, would you shoot our wedding? And then because we're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, we we're, like, were probably like some of the first people in Finland to like do like this cinematic wedding trailer that yeah. it's not anymore like the daddy cam grandpa yeah, filming. Yeah. It was like. <laughs> Yeah. five minute video it's a really good indie folk song from music bed and like that's all we would make we would that's, a, that's a really good film school as well doing weddings yeah. because yeah. i've done a few that few of them on myself and um i mean to do all the photography and film yourself and the thing is you can't really like yell cut and start over you gotta think ahead, man. You gotta like. Can you kiss I mean, again, please? Can you kiss yeah. again? <laughs> I, I have actually one one time in my whole wedding career. Yeah. I shot the the bride kissing, but for yeah. some reason my focus point was right in the middle of like where their like the heads pointed, like in their neck area, yeah. and it focused on the wall in the back, and I missed it. Oh, but damn. It was my, my, my friend. So what I did was I whispered to him. I said, "When you're leaving the aisle, kiss." <laughs> 
and then so as they're leaving he stopped and kissed her oh, and dude, i just put funny. that photo as the the kiss <laughs> oh dude that's so funny man oh Thank god you. Oh man, I'd, I'd be that's sweating. The only bad thing in the, that's ever happened. That's, that's, that's the only, only bad thing that's ever happened. <laughs> did the couple like see that? Did they, did they see that like later? No. Uh, I think I, I think I edited the one photo with it because like, it's kind of cool looking that it's like it was focused in the background, so but then the still let them kissing there. Yeah. Thing, but <laughs> you had that artsy vision in that, right? So I just yeah, told the client that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to take a kiss though afterwards. That's perfect. But yeah, I, I definitely agree with weddings. Like I feel like. At least back in the day, like, I think wedding photography or filmmaking was kind of, yeah. like, it was a little bit, like, tainted that it was kind of, like, this cheesy industry and, like, mm. the old grandpa filming them. But nowadays, yeah. like, I feel like wedding photos and films are really epic and cinematic. Mm. And I think it's a great, great, like, practice ground to learn. Of course, it's a pretty, like, high-stress place to learn because if 100%. you mess up, you can't, you can't retake it. Mm. But, like, I would say that all the skills I've learned for YouTube have come from the wedding world, like yeah. being able to uh, find the light quickly, being able to compose the shots quickly, being able to focus, all these things that a lot of people are like, who have never shot weddings, they struggle with. So I would say that the running gun filmmaking has translated from wedding world to YouTube world really yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, like, you can even see that in the commercial world as well, like, there are like few shoots that I've done where I prefer doing it just like sort of running and gunning and without any like big stabilizers and whatnot. Yeah. And just like do it. Yeah. There's, there's more America in it. <laughs> there's, I don't know why, but it's just, it's just fire. Dude. Yeah. Um, so what are you, what are your goals for with filmmaking this year? Have you, do you have any goals with filmmaking this year? Something that you want to, you know, achieve or something with YouTube, with your channel, like where do you want to take it? Yeah, I think definitely by the end of the year, I would like to like get the YouTube channel to a point where it can be my full time thing. I might still shoot a few weddings like next mm. year, but it would be nice that it's like, I've got the channel to a big enough size that it can self support myself, but yeah. also just coming up with new products and like new services in a way. Like I, I, I started dabbling a little bit with this whole like one-on-one -on -one mentoring idea in the beginning mm -hmm. of the year. And I've done a few sessions and I really enjoy it because How does that work? as much as, so basically I have like a one hour session that people can buy and then we make like a custom kind of course for them. So basically I would ask them like, what are three main topics you want to learn about? So it could be like color grading or filming cool. or, and then, and then I just spend like half an hour teaching them and then yeah. half an hour I give them constructive feedback. So I'll look through their, social media accounts, their website, their work. And I just like, I don't rip them apart, but I give a whole lot of constructive feedback yeah, because yeah, yeah. you don't have to be open for someone to tell you like, Hey, have you thought about trying this? Or maybe you should tweak that. 100%. But, um, I'll, like, cause with the YouTube videos, of course you're helping people learn, but it's not mm. so interactive in the sense that you're, you can't really talk to every single person one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So I like the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but then at the same time with the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, uh, it's hard to scale up because how many one-on-one -on -one hour mentoring slots can you give? Yeah. So I've been thinking about like doing maybe like group group sessions where it's like, you know, a course, maybe it's like a three month course with 10 students and you have a weekly kind of like theme and then you do like coaching for them or I'm still trying to figure that out to mm. see like what I want to do, but it's been fun to just try out like the one-on-one -on -one mentoring and, and see if you like it or not. So yeah, it's cool. Like I think it's super awesome. And like, I, I mean, I, I did went to I did go to film film school myself, yeah. and uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. But would I do it again now? N not necessarily. Um, yeah. I mean, I had a great time and great tutors, and who I'm still friends with, and who I can always kind of like get back to and ask questions, which is which is awesome. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think like with this day and age, like having all these tutorials online and then people like yourself building up a brand like where you also teach filmmaking i think that's a super awesome and it's it's yeah. cool to have that you know accessible because not necessarily everybody has the chance to fly out to a film school or whatever because mm, you just open true. your laptop yeah. it's right there yeah yeah i think, yeah, I think cool. like there's there's like pros and cons to both like i think school is good because it, it's an environment where you get to like collaborate with other filmmakers yeah. and a lot of times the school has the equipment for, to yeah. try out like i never went to yeah, school so i never got to like dabble with lights or like the really like 
intense gear, you know, like, yeah, so I yeah. haven't got to try those out. So I feel like really uncomfortable shooting studio flashes or even lighting. But then I've had the other side of the coin. Dude, where I've seen your stuff. Spending You're out- good, man. Come on. <laughs> but like, <laughs> like if someone was like, asked me to come in a commercial show and be like, can you do the lighting? I'd be like, or even like, this is the, this is the best part. Like the yeah. terms, like these like official terminology. I, I remember one time I was on a shoot with my brother Yeah. and, they had the C300 and we had a camera assistant and they set up the whole camera for us. And I had never used a C300 before oh, damn. and we're communicating in Finnish, like, cause it, we were in Canada time. And I was like asking like, where's the record button? Like, where's the, you know, because I, I just never had an opportunity to try these more high end cinema cameras. Yeah, 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 so yeah. like school, some film schools give you the opportunity to like kind of dabble in that world without having to invest in yeah, that that's true. gear that's yet. True. So there, there's pros and cons. Well, you, although can I learn, said, you can still learn all that though. Like you don't need to go to film school for it. You know, it's, and I spent, I spent my money on gear, not school. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Like you, you had your own school and I think your school was freaking awesome, man. And all the work <laughs> that you've done with weddings, they look freaking genius. It's just gold, man. For people who are just starting with their channels, people mm-hmm. who are just starting with their channels. Um, yeah. what does it take to be a YouTuber in 2020? Hmm. What does it take? <laughs> I love this silent. For, mm. For, mm. Well, I think the first step is just to start. Yeah. Like, I feel like so many people just talk about it, but then they don't start because of fear or yeah. insecurities. Or I think, I think one of the biggest hurdles to get over is that you have such a high expectation of yourself in the beginning that you take so long just to put the first video. Yeah. But I think if you realize that your first video is going to be your worst and yeah. just to get it over and done with, then it's a lot better because you make your first video and you just keep making more videos and yeah, over it's time it's going to get better. Whereas if you like half a year are working on the very first video still, and then you finally release it. First of all, you probably have put so much time and effort in that, that there's no way that you can keep recreating that same quality. Yeah. So I would you just say, just start. yeah, just start and be consistent. And then, and then just figure out what style you are. Like I've seen so many YouTube channels where <laughs> I remember one time there was one uh, YouTube channel, it was like an Asian guy, and he starts the exact same way as Peter McKinnon. And I, I filmed this and I sent it to Peter, and I was just like, Peter, I never had an Asian twin. <laughs> and the guy was literally like, What's up, boys? And I, you could just tell right away that this guy That's wasn't hilarious. being himself. It wasn't who he was. So I felt really uncomfortable watching that channel. So oh, just be man. yourself and make videos and then enjoy it. I think the that's, that, you know, this is where we go back, you know. Do what you're good at and just be yourself. Uh, I mean, yeah. obviously, it's good to imitate. You know, if, if you don't know what you're doing and you want to get into film and creating your own channel, it is good to have those role models, obviously, that you try to, you know, sort of replicate. But don't copy. <laughs> I mean, you can use them as reference and you can use them as a kind of like a guidance, like where you want to aim at. Let's say wow. with how things are looking like, um, you know, um, but don't copy people though. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. You gotta find your own voice, right? Like I think I can only pick, it's like with film. Like if you wanna be a film director, you don't copy Steven Spielberg. They're already yeah. following Peter McKinnon because he's Peter McKinnon. We don't need yeah. another Asian Peter McKinnon or yeah. another European Peter McKinnon. Yeah, so. Yeah, and, and you just, you can't be someone else. I think that's one of the, like, yeah. the most freeing things to realize that like, I can't be anyone else. I can't be you, Joey, but you can't be me either. And I, I am <laughs> the only deaf pop way out on the earth, you know? So yeah. if, if there's only one of me, I might as well be me. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And bring what I have to bring offer to the world rather than just like trying to be someone else the whole time. 100%, 100%, man. Dude, that was that. That was that. Um, okay, people, for who are watching <laughs> and just starting with their channels. Commentator luck. Joey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, go check out Tepo Hopwe's channel on YouTube. It is freaking amazing. He has great tips and how-to videos, especially for people if you're starting with filmmaking or photography and all that. So go give him a, no subscribe to his channel, not follow. You can also give him a follow on Instagram as well. Pretty sick photos there, dude. Thank you. Thanks again, man. I had a blast. Been wanting to pick your brain for a long time. 
Thank you. Thanks, man. I'm going to get back to editing now. <laughs> and that's a wrap for this episode. Make sure to stay tuned for the next one. We got new interesting episodes coming out soon. Meanwhile, you can check out my other work. You'll find me at Joey Palmer's in all platforms. For now, I want to thank you for listening. Till next time. Thanks. Bye.